Hey everyone, it's TJ from Impact Gamers again, and we're back with another retro remake. This time we're going to be making the Codemasters Micro Machines from 1991, released on the NES. And in 1984, version 2 was released for the SNES and the Sega Mega Drive. It was a fun game where four tiny vehicles raced around home environments and could be knocked off or fall off the track. Our version is going to be called Micro Driver. And this tutorial is for beginners who already have learnt the basics of Click Team Fusion. All the game resources can be found on the link shown on the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go to File and click New. We're then going to go down to Save As and we're going to save it as Micro Driver but you can call your version whatever you want. Now we're going to change the application window size in the properties and we're going to change it to 960 by 560. When prompted whether we want to modify them or not we want to click yes. Now we're going to click on frame and in the properties we're going to change the background colour to a grey. Then we're going to proceed to go into our frame by clicking on the number 1. And now we're going to insert a new object and we're going to insert an active object. So we're going to left click to place it down. We're going to right click and go to edit and this is going to be our player car. Now we're going to go to import. We're going to select our car from our files and we need to make sure it is facing to the right. Make sure the hotspot and the action point are in the centre and press OK. We're now going to rename the object and we're going to call this one P1 but you can call it what you want. Now we're going to change the object's movement. Now the reason we only need the car to face in the one direction is because we're going to be using physics race car movement and this allows us to set different directions. But after selecting physics race car movement, you'll notice you'll be prompted with it asking us to insert a physics engine. And you'll also be prompted that you need the hotspot to be at the centre, which we did when we imported it. And now we're just going to insert a new object and we're going to insert the physics engine. And we're just going to place it outside the play area. And now we're just going to run our application. By default, the way we control the car is with the arrow keys. The up arrow is to go forward and increase speed. The backwards arrow is to go backwards and decrease speed. And the left and right arrows are to turn left or right. If you do want to change these, go into the properties of the application. Go into runtime settings. And if we scroll down, we can actually change our controls. And now what we're going to do is we're going to insert another active object. And this object is going to be a post which will block the player character. And just like before, we're going to import and load up our image for our post. We're going to press OK. And just like before as well, we're also going to rename this object. We're going to call ours post, but again, you can call yours what you wish. And now to add some more objects going to insert a new active object and we're going to import a fork. This is going to help give the player the illusion that you are a small vehicle in someone's home. And just like before, make sure to rename your object for your own reference and we're going to call ours fork. We're going to repeat that by inserting another active object, right clicking and going to edit. But this time we're inserting the knife. And we're also going to add another active object and this one is going to become our plant pot. Again, picking items for the environment which will help give the player the illusion that the player is a small car in someone's home will help with player immersion. And now just to make sure all the objects are renamed. At the moment, our player vehicle will be able to drive through all of these objects. 
So we're going to hold down shift and select the objects that we want to make the player not be able to go through and we're going to add them into a qualifier. All of the ones selected will end up in the same qualifier. We're going to add them to obstacles and this is just as our reference so we know what they are. Now if we click on each individual object, you'll notice they are all in the same qualifier. Again, remember that them being in the obstacle qualifier group will not actually make them obstacles. This is just a reference for us who are making the game for what we want them to be. And now we are going to go into the event editor to do the coding. So we're going to make a new condition. We're going to select start of frame. And what we want to do is make it so anything that is an obstacle, we want to paste it into the background. Physics objects can only collide correctly with other physics objects or backdrops, but we need actives in our game to keep them visible when we add the table. So we're going to go to animation, we're going to select paste into background, and we're going to say that we want them to be obstacles. Now we're going to set a new condition, and say if our player car collides with a backdrop then we want the car to stop and now we're going to go to run and test the application now we're going to go back into the frame editor and we are going to go into frame 1 and what we need to do now is change the size of the frame so we're going to go down into its properties and in size we're going to type in 4000 by 2000. And now we have a lot more space in order to build our track. But at the moment our car is just going to drive straight off the screen. So what we need to do is go to the event editor and we're going to make it so that the camera follows our car across the screen. We're going to do this by in the event editor making a new condition and we're going to select the always rule as a special condition. And we're going to go down to scrollings in our storyboard section, center window positioning frame. And we need to make sure that it is relative to our player vehicle. And now again, we are going to run our application just to test it. And now we can drive anywhere on screen and the camera will follow our player. So now that we know the camera works, we're going to go and close our test application and in our frame editor we're now going to insert a new object. But first we're going to move the objects in the play area and we're going to move them outside the play area. This is going to make it easier because now we're going to be placing in the table object. So as always we insert a new active object, right click to edit and then we're going to go and import. Don't forget to rename it. And then we're going to insert another object and this is going to become our bridge between the tables. So same as before, we're going to right click to edit and import an image we've already dedicated to being the bridge. And don't forget to rename this object as well. But as a reference for us, we're going to call this one bridge horizontal. And this is just so we can also add another bridge which we'll be using for going vertically. Now, in order for us to make it easier for positioning the table, it is already set to a width of 300 and a height of 300. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our grid setup. We're also going to enable snap to grid and we're going to type in 50 by 50 in the grid setup. And this is going to allow us to move our table around and snap it to the grid a bit easier. This is going to enable us now to pull in more pieces of the table, snap them to the grid and just start to build the track. Now just like we did earlier we're going to hold shift and we're going to select the table and the horizontal bridge. We're going to go to the properties and we're going to add them into a qualifier. But this time we're going to put them in a qualifier called areas. And this is just going to be a reference to us that this is going to be the areas the players can drive on. And just to test that, if you click on both objects individually, you'll see they're both in the same qualifier. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the horizontal bridge and we're going to clone it. 
Now this means it's going to have all the same properties that the previous one has as well, but it is going to be an individual object, so it can be changed. And just so that it looks different, we're going to right click and edit, and we're going to rotate the image. So now we have two different bridges. And now at this point, you can start to build up the track. But the other objects that we added in sooner than the table are actually going to be underneath it. So what we need to do is click on it, go to Arrange, click on Order, and Bring to Front. Also, as an alternative, every time you drag in a new object from the Assets bar, this will automatically be on top or to the front. When placing objects like the posts, if you want them to be closer, just make sure you turn off your snap to grid. If you want to make placing the posts a bit easier, you can actually select the paint option and then select the object you want to put down. And every time you click, it will just place one of them objects down where you've clicked. Now that everything has been placed down where it needs to be, we've noticed that our car is actually hidden underneath the table. So all we do is click on player 1 in the assets bar, go to arrange, order and bring to front again. If you need to find anything, you can just find it in the assets menu, click on it and it show you where it is. So now we're going to place our car on the track and get ready to test it. And if you want to see more of your track all at once, all you do is go here to the zoom options and you can set it to 25% instead. Now that I've zoomed out a bit and I can see more of my track, I notice that there are three posts outside of where I want them to be. So if you drag over the ones you want to be selected in order to move them a bit easier, you can now drag over them to select them all and this will show your selection and then you can move them all together. I've also found a section where a player could potentially cheat. So what I'm going to do is right click to clone this object and then I'm going to click on the object. I'm going to click once more and then once more again, each after just a small pause. And this is going to allow me to rotate it to the angle I want. And now as you can see, it has closed off that little section, made it harder for a player or an opponent to cheat. And just for good measure, can also place another one down just up here. If you are happy with the placement of a particular object, you can actually click on it, go to Arrange, and go down to Lock. And then click a selected object. So after that, we're now going to go to Run and run application just so we can test it. So now you can test it and make sure that your car doesn't go through objects. You'll notice if we drive off the table or the bridges currently, it does not reset our character. This will come later, but just test that everything is how you want it to be and that you can make your way around the track. And as always, once you're happy with it, make sure to close your test application in order for us to continue. So now that we've got the track sorted out, we're now going to insert the non-playable characters, or the opponent's cars, and what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom back in. This is going to make things a little easier, and we're going to find our way back to the top left. So now we're going to insert a new active object, and this is going to become the computer-controlled car. So just like before, we import the image. Make sure both points are in the center again, and then press OK. And we're going to rename this object CPU2. We're going to change its movement to a physics movement, and we're going to change it to physics bouncing ball, and this is going to enable the computer to control this object. Again, like earlier, when prompted with this message, we're going to press OK. Now there are going to be a few things that we change. So the first thing is going to be the elasticity of this object. And we're going to change this to a much lower number of 35. Now this is the amount that the object is going to bounce. 
and so that the car isn't pulled to the bottom of the screen we're going to turn its gravity scale to zero and the initial speed is going to be set to zero now we're going to scroll down and we're going to change its collision shape and we want it to be of shape of the first image but we do want the auto rotation to stay ticked we're now going to right click on the object and we're going to clone it and we're going to have three CPU players and now we're going to right click on number three and I'm going to import a different image so that each car has a unique color and now we're just going to do the exact same for number four Great, so now we have four cars, all of a different colour, ready to race. Now, just so that we can get them to behave all in the same way, we're actually going to put them into the same group or qualifier. So just like before, we're going to hold shift and we're going to highlight all the different cars. Then we're going to go to the properties, go to events, go to qualifiers, and make sure they're all added to the same qualifier like before, but this time they're being put into vehicles. Now we're going to select anywhere off of them just to deselect them and this time we're going to hold shift but only select the yellow, green and purple car or the computer controlled ones. And this is so that we can add these into an additional group and we're going to set them into the NPCs qualifier group. And now we're going to go over to the event editor to start adding the code. So firstly we're going to replace any rule to do with player 1. We do this by right clicking here and go down to replace with another object. Now we're going to select the vehicle qualifier group. And now we're going to add a whole new condition saying that if any vehicles collide with another object and that object being any other vehicles then we're going to right click underneath the vehicles, go to movement and we're going to go to stop. Now we need to check if any of them fall off the screen. So to do this we're going to go to our always condition and we're going to run a loop for every vehicle. To do this we're going to move over and click underneath the vehicles using the right click and we're going to name this loop falling. Now we're going to make a new condition and we're going to say on the vehicles if we go down to loop and click on each object and then what we need to do is we're going to type in the same name falling so it matches the loop we created now we need to right click on this condition and insert a new condition to it and we're going to check if the vehicles are overlapping the area but we're going to say negate need to move over to where the vehicles are right click and we're going to go down to destroy so now we need to test our application and what we need to do is we need to see what happens when we the player drives off the table or the bridge and when we do our vehicle is destroyed and now just to test the computer controlled we're going to just push one of them off of the table and see if that vehicle is also destroyed so now we know that that works there is one thing that you may have noticed every time we test our application all of the computer control vehicles are all over the place so we're now we're going to sort that how we fix this is by going into our workspace toolbar now if we click on our player controlled vehicle we go to movement and if we set its initial direction to face the direction we want we clear the other directions and we pick the one we want and then we're going to proceed to do this with all the other vehicles so they'll all start off facing the same direction and once all this is done we can test our application again and see that they are all facing the same direction and it will be the initial direction that we've just given them now the problem is so far that the computer controlled cars don't actually know which direction to travel in to fix this we're going to have to add something called checkpoints but first to start them we are going to have to add a active object into the game the active object first we're going to clear it and we're just going to fill it with a circle and then color it so it's all one color after pressing ok with that we're going to click on it once so it's highlighted and then click on it once again 
so that the black squares appear around it and this will enable us to resize it. Now we're going to want to increase the size so that it takes up roughly the entire size of the track as shown on screen. And just so that we can see the track through the object, we're actually going to go into its properties, into its display options, and we're going to change its blend coefficient. And we are going to change this to 200. This is going to make it so it's more transparent so we can see through it to the track below. Again, just make sure that it actually fits the track between the barriers so you know that the cars are definitely going to hit it. Now we're going to use the brush tool again. Now we're going to draw the track backwards. So if you have a clockwise track, you are going to want to draw the checkpoints anti-clockwise. And then once you're finished, right click. Now the reason that we did this backwards is because we're going to do something called spreading a value. And when we do this, what it's going to do is it's actually going to get all the checkpoints from newest to oldest. So it will actually start at the start of the track where we want it to and end at the end of the track. We're now going to go to the properties of the checkpoint once we've selected it and we're going to add a alterable value in the value subsection. And we're going to call this alterable value number. We're now going to jump over to the event editor and we're going to go to condition 1 where it says start a frame. We're going to go over and right click underneath the checkpoints and we're going to go to values and spread a value. And we are going to do this starting at number 1. So this will now spread a value across all the checkpoints starting at number 1. And if we go to screen and count how many we put down, it will head all the way up to 19. And it will put this number in the alterable value that we created on the checkpoint object. Now we're going to zoom back in and go to our cars. And we're going to select them all again by holding down shift and selecting all the cars and now what we're going to do we're going to go to their properties and we're going to add some alterable values to the cars themselves so we're going to go to the properties to values we're going to add a new alterable value we're going to double click on it to rename it and we're going to call the first one going to and we're going to make another one called coming from now the next one we're going to add is we're going to add an alterable value called laps. But the next ones we're going to add are for the computer controlled cars. So we're going to have one called normal speed and this is where we can input how fast we want them to go. And we're going to add one called control. Now this is going to enable us to say if we want them to lose control or not or how much. And the final one is going to be last angle, and this one is going to be in case we want to add skid marks. Now we're just going to go through adding the speeds to the computer controlled cars, and we're going to give them all a slightly different speed. So some of them will be faster and some of them will be slower. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to make it so that the computer controlled cars can aim and drive. And we're going to do this by going over to the event editor we are going to go and make a new condition and this one is going to be to do with the timer and we're going to set this timer to one millisecond and like before we're going to go and right click underneath the NPC's count and for each object and this time we're going to call this one aim and now we need a new condition and we're going to go to the NPC's group go down to loops and select on each object and then we're going to type in aim. Now we're going to right click on the same condition and we're going to click insert. And we're going to go to checkpoint, go down to alterable values and compare to one of the alterable values. And we're going to select number, equal and wherever the going to alterable value is set in the group NPC. So now we're going to set the direction of the NPC so we right click. We're going to click on direction and look in direction of and we're going to make sure it is set to being relative to the checkpoint that we match. And now we are going to set something called the linear velocity. 
This just means the speed in a direction, and we want the speed to be what our normal speed is set to for our NPC. And then after that, what we need to do is set the angle, and now the angle is going to be set to wherever we're going to. So now that they'll have a direction and speed, we need them to, once they hit a checkpoint, to then change this to go towards the next checkpoint. So we do this by adding a new condition, and we want to select vehicles, including ours, and say that if they collide with a checkpoint, we're also going to right click and insert a another condition to the same one. For the new condition, we're going to say if the checkpoints number equals where we're going to, and this is for all vehicles, not just the NPCs, then what we want to do is set the direction of where we're coming from and set it to where we were going to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add one to where we're going to. Now, the only problem with this is when we get to checkpoint 19, there is no checkpoint 20. So when it adds one and sets it to 20, it does not exist. So to fix this, we're going to add a new condition and we're going to check if the vehicle's going to value is greater than the value of the amount of checkpoints that there is, then we're going to class this as doing one lap. So we're going to go to the vehicles group and we're going to add to their alterable value of laps. We're going to add one. And then on top of this, what we can do is we can also set the checkpoints back to number one. And with this running, this shall now complete the lap and reset it so that they can go back around again to do another lap. And now what we need to do is test this. So now we need to test our game. Now, as we're testing this, you will notice that some of the opponent's cars are actually struggling to make their way across the track. Now, there are a few things we can do to try and fix this, but testing is extremely important when making a game, because if we don't test, we don't find out issues like this, and then ways to resolve them. So one thing that you can do is we can actually start to shuffle the checkpoints around completely. So after that, after all of the checkpoints have been replaced, now what we're going to do is we're going to add a respawn for the cars. So if they fall off the edge, that they can actually respawn back into the game. So to start this, we are going to, in the properties of the cars, we're going to go down to flags and we're going to add a new flag. We're then going to rename it and we're going to call it respawn. We're now going to go to the car and double click on it or right click and edit to bring up its animation options and we're going to go down and we're going to have a falling animation. The one we're going to use is we're going to make a puff of smoke and make sure when importing your animation you tick import as animation so all our frames are already set up and now we have a working falling animation. This process you have to do individually on each car. Another way of doing this which can save you some time is by setting up one enemy perfectly so everything you want is already set up and then cloning it. This is another way of doing it. So now we're going to go back into the event editor and this is where we're going to make the rules for respawning. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to condition number five and we're actually going to remove it where it says to destroy the car. And instead what we're going to do is right click and we're going to go down to turn the flag on. Now what we're going to do is add a condition saying that if there is a collision between the vehicles and a checkpoint, we're going to right click to insert another condition. And we're going to say if the checkpoints number is different to where we're going to. And we can also insert another condition saying if the checkpoint is different for where we're coming from.
And now we need to go back under the vehicles and right click and make sure the flag is turned on for respawn. But now we need to make a new condition to tell the game what happens when the respawn flag is on. So we're going to start by saying when the flag is on for respawning. We are going to immediately stop them from moving. So we right click underneath the vehicles, go to movement and we're going to go to set speed. And we're going to set it to zero to stop it from moving. And as well as that, we're also going to change their animation. So we're going to go into animation, change animation sequence to falling. So it will play the one we added earlier. And now in order to get them to respawn in the right place, we're going to go down and make a new condition. And first we need to make sure that the falling animation has finished playing with the vehicles. After that, what we're then going to do is add another condition into the same one and see if the flag is on for respawn. We now need to make sure that the number is equal from the checkpoint and the value, the alterable value for coming from is the same as the vehicles. And now to finish that off, we need to right click underneath the vehicles group, go to set position, and we want to set the position to be relative to the checkpoint. Now for this next bit, we're going to add a new condition, and the new condition is going to be the exact rules we've just added, except one change. So the last one that we're going to add, instead of saying number of checkpoint equals coming from, it's going to say going to instead. This is because we're going to set it so the direction in which they spawn is going to be facing the right way. And instead of setting position for the checkpoint, we're actually going to make it so they look in the direction of the checkpoint. And for good measure, we can turn the flag off. After that, we're then going to change the animation sequence and we're going to change it back to stopped. So now we need to test the application and see how it goes. So as you can see, there is definitely a bug there. So the car seems to hit the checkpoint and it's not doing what we want so hopefully you've been looking at the manual rather than this point in the video and we go into the event editor just to try and find it and here is the problem we need to change this to be different and uh, then that should fix it and as you can see if we drive off of the bridge here we respawn at our previous checkpoint and now just because the speed is a little slow for our vehicle, just going to go into movement properties for player one and increase the speed to 80. And now when we try it, we're able to keep up with the computer cars and keep in the race. Now that we've tested that and closed our test application, we're just going to move the last checkpoint so it's not touching any of the computer controlled vehicles or even our own. Now because we don't need to see the checkpoints because we've placed them where they work and where we're happy with them, we can go to the properties once we've highlighted a checkpoint and we can go to display options and we can turn off visible at start. And now when we test our application, we can see the map a lot better, there's nothing blocking the way, and we can just play the game without having to see the checkpoints. Now for this next bit, we're going to add another layer to the game. Now a layer is essentially a picture on top of another picture. So after adding the second layer, 
we're actually going to make it so we can't see the first layer by toggling the viewing symbol just here. And now in the properties, we're actually going to change the X and Y coefficient for scrolling both to zero. So anything we place there now, it will remain where we've placed it. So now on this layer, we're going to insert a new object, but this object is going to be string. And this is going to let us put some writing on the screen. And just in the properties, we're going to go down and we're going to change it to say time. We're then just going to change the font of it as well. We're going to make sure it is in bold. You can select your font and even increase your size of the font here. We're also going to rename it as reference and we're going to put down where it is our title for time. And this one is also going to be a string object and we're going to rename this one to title lapse. And then we're going to do the same again and we're going to go to font and we're going to change the size to 16 and make it bold. And then we're just going to change the text so that it says lapse. So now we're going to insert a new object and this time we're inserting a counter which we're going to use as our timer. After placing it we can change the colour of the numbers themselves so pick whichever colour you wish and then what we can also do is we are going to rename it to be time just so we know what it's going to be used for. And just to save a bit of time, you can right click and clone it. But this one, we do not want to be used as time. So we're actually going to rename this one for laps. Now we're going to go back to the layers and we're going to make it so layer one is now visible again. And we're going to lock layer two. After getting the layers to be how we want them to be, we are going to head back over to the event editor. Now, we already have a condition for every 100th of a second. So on that line of code, we're going to go over and make sure we're on the right counter. And we're going to add to counter and we want to just put 1. And now for the other line of code we need... We already have one that says as its condition always. So what we're going to do is we want to set the counter to always be the value of the lapse of our car. And now if we run our application, we can actually see the timer going up as we play it. And when we do a lap, it goes up by one. Now to give the sensation that you're high up, we're going to add another layer into the game. So we're going to go back over to the layers and we're going to add a new layer and drag this one down to the bottom. So now we have three different layers for three different aspects of the game and we can even rename them just so we know which layer is being used for what purpose. After renaming them, what we're going to do now is we're going to change the X and Y coefficient of this layer to be 0.7 for both of them. This is going to still allow it to move, but just not as quickly. Now we're going to insert a new object, and this layer is below all the others. So we're going to go and add in a quick backdrop. And what we're going to do with this quick backdrop is change it to a motif. Now this is a repeated pattern and we're going to import our floor image and this is then going to duplicate that pattern for as much of the space as we make this object fill up. And now in size and position we're going to set it to 0, 0 for its x and y coordinates and the width and the height we're actually going to set to match how big the game's frame is. And now you'll notice when we run our application, the floor moves at a different speed to the rest of the objects on the other layers. 
and this is going to give the illusion to the player that we're actually higher up than the layer below us which is the floor. So now we're going to add in some text and this is going to help the player know who's won the game. So to do this we're going to head over to layer 3 and we're going to make sure that it's unlocked so that we can add some things to it. And we're going to add in some text or string like we did before. Now we're going to increase the size of it and you'll notice we're actually aware of which layer the object's been created on because of the number 3 just there in the little blue box. So now to edit the font, increase the size and make it bold and change it to what we want it to say and we're even going to center it. Now after resizing it and positioning it to where we want it to be on screen, what we do need to do is make sure that this only displays when the cars aren't moving. So what we need to do now is move over to the event editor. So once in the event editor we are going to make a new condition and what we would like to do is to check the visibility of the string we've just put in. So we need to go down and check if it is visible. To do this we need to go under the joystick which represents the player one and what we need to do is go to ignore controls. And now to restore control we need to do the opposite. So now we need to say if the string is invisible we are going to restore control. And so that the computer cars aren't racing we need to, when it is visible, make sure that we set their speeds to zero. But if we test that application what we can see is that the timer starts even though we can't move and that the computer controlled have already set their directions. The way we fix this is in the event editor on line 6 we have a rule that says every hundredth of a second. Now what we need to do is we just need to add into that to check the visibility of the string on the screen. So we need to make sure it says if it's invisible then this will run. So now when we go to run it we will notice that the timer doesn't move and that the initial direction of all the vehicles is the same. So now we're going to make a new condition and we're going to say when the timer equals one second what we're going to do is we're going to change the ultrables string and we're going to change it to say set. Then what we're going to do is make a new condition and we're going to say when the timer equals two seconds we're going to also change the ultrables string and we're going to say go. And now we're going to make a new condition saying if the timer equals 3 seconds what we're going to do is we're going to make it so the string becomes invisible and this will make it so the timer will start and that the computer controlled will be able to look where they're going. So now if we test that we will see the words changing as the timer goes up and then once it says go it will make it so the timer actually starts. But now what we need to do after testing that is we need to make sure that once someone wins that we know who and that the game will stop. So we go over to the event editor and we're going to add a new condition. So we need a condition to check that if any of the car's alterable values for laps equals 3. So we will go to the alterable string and we will be able to change it now so it will take the name of that player who has done 3 laps. Then we'll add the plus sign and we can add another message then afterwards. And we can also put here what button it is in order to restart. So we're going to use R. And for that we're going to add a new condition and we're going to say upon pressing a key and then it will prompt us to press the key we want to use so we're going to press R and then we can go into the storyboard in order to restart the frame. 
So now let's take a look. When we hit into another player, it doesn't do too much damage. So we're going to change that now. So we're going to go to the event editor. And we're going to go to our line 4 where it says collision between vehicle and another vehicle. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to their ultra values. And we're going to go over to control. And we're just going to add between 10 and 20. So we're going to actually pick 13. And we're going to add this. After this though, we also want to add the rule onto the every one second rule saying that control will be set back down to zero. This just means that they will lose control briefly but then return back to normal. Also just in case it ever goes back down below zero we can set this rule here which enables it to set it to zero if it ever goes below zero. Now we also want to make sure that their aim is only going to be functioning if control is at zero. So we're going to go up to this rule and we're going to right click to insert new condition and we're going to make sure that it's going to check to make sure only do this if their control is zero. So doing this now when you collide with another vehicle just means they lose control for a brief amount of time. So now let's run the frame and test it out. So what will happen now is when you collide with an enemy vehicle they'll lose control but also it means you can push them off the edge of the levels because their direction and their control levels will be changed briefly so you can actually send them off the level. The next thing we're going to add is a completely optional part of the game but one of the fun parts of micro machines was depending on your speed if you started to go quicker dust would actually kick up so this is again optional but we're going to show you how to do it anyway. So just like before we're going to add another active object we're going to double click on it or right click and edit and we're going to go to import and we are going to load up the image that we're going to use which is going to be a skid mark. Now we're going to go over to the event editor and we're going to find the line of code which is our always rule. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to piggyback off one of the loops we've already made. So we're going to use the one that checks for when we're falling but we are going to also insert another condition to it. So now we're going to check for two values. So the first thing we're going to do is find its absolute. Now the absolute just means that if it is minus 5, it will become 5. So in other words, if it's a negative number, it becomes a positive. And then we're going to find out whatever the vehicle's angle is. And then we're going to find the difference between that angle and what its previous angle was. So we're going to now check if that is greater than 20. That is when we would want to add a skid mark. But we also need to check if it's gone round in a complete circle. So how we're going to do this is we're just going to check that it's less than 90 so we know that that hasn't happened. So what we will have is checking now to see if it is higher than 20 but below 90. And now then this is where we're going to create the object, which is the skid mark we've just previously created. And we're just going to make it so when it's created, it is relative to the vehicle. So now just to rename the skid mark object so we know what it's used for. 
And then what we also need to do is we're now going to adjust the angle of the skid mark. And we're just going to do this by making sure it is the same as what the car's angle is. Now what we need to do is add a condition that allows us to update the angle. So we're going to do this by making it 20th of a second. We're going to make sure that last angle is now the current angle. But that is only half of it. So now when we test it and run it, what we're going to notice is the object numbers that you can see in the debug window. And you'll notice after playing for a while, what will happen is you'll reach the limit of a thousand objects. So if you're doing this on the free edition, it will actually then bring up the limits. So to fix this issue, we're going to fade out the skid marks and then destroy them. So we're going to make a new condition and we're going to say that every one hundredth of a second, this is when we're going to start to fade them out. And we'll do this by adding 1 to their alterable value A. And then we will also set their blend coefficient A to whatever the value is which we have just created. We're going to rename this value to be fade. And then we're going to make a new condition. And in this condition, we're going to say fade goes to a greater value of 255. And the skid mark is then destroyed. Also, one thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the order is correct. So we're going to go to line 22. And what we're going to do is set the order so that when they're created, they're actually behind the vehicles rather than on top of them. And now if we test it and keep an eye on our object count, you'll notice on the screen as well that the skid marks are in fact disappearing. And now the final thing to add is some music. So we're going to go to our rule. Um, 18 or our condition 18 and we're going to go to where it says time equals 3 and this is where we're going to insert our music so we're going to go to sounds play and loot sample and then we're going to go to our file and find the track that we want to be played in the background remember to make sure that the loop is played zero times and this will keep it playing infinitely but then we also need to make sure that when the lapse equal 3 we are actually going to stop the music and now let's test it to see if it works And don't forget to save your work.